what is good youtube charon fx back hey man listen so in this video i'm about to show you how i was able to catch about 300 pips trading btc usd yeah you had 300 pips now if you really want to learn how i did it make sure you stick around to the end of this video make sure you watch this video till the end all right and if you also want to catch moves like this, just DM me on Instagram to get yourself enrolled in my one on one mentorship. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like button and make sure to drop a comment down below. So with that being said, let's just get a business. Alright, so now starting from the 4H time frame, what was my top process? So the first thing I did was start trying to identify our train. Right? And looking at our chart, what train are we in? We're in an uptrend. How do we know we're in an uptrend? You need to identify what our market structures to really know if you're in an uptrend or not. You get me? So now let's go into the chart and let's all identify our market structures together. Now, starting from here, what did price do here? Price created a lower high. Why is this considered a lower high? Because this lower high met to the formation of a new wall, of a new lower low, thereby breaking below this higher low. So at this point, price moves from bullish market structure to a bearish market structure. You get me? Good. Now, after price created this lower low, what did it do next? It came back up to create a new high, not a lower high. Why are we considering this structure a high but not a lower high? Because this structure never led to the break of this wall of this lower low. You get me? So we are not going to consider this wall a lower high. We are going to consider this as just a high. After this high was created, what the price do next? Price came back down to a wall and low. You get me? After this low was created, what a price would do next, price came back up to curl a lower high. Now, why are we considering this a lower high but not a high? Because after price created this lower high and led to the formation of a new lower low, thereby breaking below its previous low, lower low. You get me? Good. After this lower low was created, what did price do next? The next thing price did was to rally up to create a new higher high. You get me? So at this point, there's a shift in structure from bearish structure to, to bullet structure. You get me? So after price created this higher high, the next thing I knew price was going to do was to create a new higher low so it can continue back up to create a new higher high. So after price created this higher high, the next thing I did was to go down to my what to my H1 time frame or to a lower time frame, which is my H1 time frame, to look for my entries so I can capitalize on this move to the upside. All right. So now let's go down to our H1 time frame to look for our entries. Now coming down to our H1 time frame, right? What was the first thing I did? Now since our H1 time frame is giving us bullish market structures, and our H1 time frame is also giving us bullish market structures, the next thing I did was to look for what my key levels. Now what key levels am I talking about? So. In an uptrend or in a bullish structure, the key levels you want to be looking for is what is resistance to become support. And in a bearish market structure, the key levels you want to be looking for is support to become resistance. So covering into our chart, what key levels are I looking for? Since our H1 is also in a bullish market structure, now the key levels I want to be looking for is, is what resistance to become what support. We have first resistance, second resistance, third resistance, then we have what, a support. After we've identified our resistance, what a price do? Price came back up, broke above our resistance, and we retested it as a support. Do you get my point? Yeah, after we've identified our key level, which is our resistance, we wait for price to do what? 
to break above it and retest it as a support. Alright, so we can continue back to the upside. Again, good. So after price had retested our resistance as a support, what are we looking for? We start to look for what our rejections. We start to look for candlestick reactions, which is like weak rejections of our key level. So do we have our rejections here? We can see when price came into our zone, they rejected one, it rejected two, it rejected three. Again, giving us an idea of what's happening in that area. Of giving us an idea of what's happening in that area. Okay, so after we found our rejections, what's the next thing we are looking for? We are looking for candlestick confirmations. Alright, we are looking for candlestick confirmations. And looking at our first retest, which is this retest right here, what candlestick confirmations do we see? We see our three white soldiers candlestick confirmation. And what's the three white soldiers candlestick confirmation? So the three white soldiers candlestick confirmation pattern is made up of a bearish candle and three bullish continuation candlesticks. Right? So we have this bearish candle and we have what three bullish continuation candlesticks so this could have been your your first entry after you had your third bullish confirmation candlestick this could have been your first entry all right you could have entered right here after the third bullish candlestick place your stop loss right below the wick of this rejection and you take profit to this resistance level right which gives you a risk of 1 is to 2.78, almost 1 is to 3. We gave me risk it 100 pips to make 280 pips. But that wasn't my entry. That wasn't my entry because I missed this entry, right? So by the time I came back to the chart, price had come back to retest our key level for the second time. Alright? And all I did was to take my trail line and connect these structures. All, right, all I did was to connect point A and point B, right? So we have point A and point B. So after I connected my trend line, the next thing I did was to wait for a breakout of the trend line. So after price broke out of our trend line with this candlestick prior, right that's when I, I went in for buys. I, I went in for buys or longs. Place my stop loss right below this level. Below this week, and my take profit to what? To this structure right here, this resistance level right here. That's where I place my what? My take profit. Do you get me? Good. As simple as that. So. At this point, I was risking, I think, 60 pips to make almost 300 pips, you know, 200 and, um, yeah, 290 pips, almost 300 pips. In game, I was risking 62 pips to make 300 pips. You know, one is to 4.6. And even with this entry, your second entry could have been after price gave you this, a morning star confirmation candlestick. But I decided to wait for the breakout of this trend line. Again, I decided to wait for the breakout of the trend line. And after price was able to break out of the trend line, I waited for longs, placed my stop loss below the wick of this bearish candle, and I might take profit to where? To this level, which is, I think, uh, 66,800. Yes, yeah, 66,800. You get my point? As simple as that, as simple as that. If you didn't understand what I did, just go back and rewatch the video again. Just go back and rewatch the video over and over again till you understand. And like I said earlier on, if you're also interested in catching moves like this, just DM me on Instagram at CharlFX to get yourself enrolled in my one on one mentorship. Alright? Just DM me on Instagram at CharlFX to get yourself enrolled in my one on one mentorship. Alright? If you want to catch moves like this, and also, if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that like button, make sure to drop a comment down below. And make sure to share this video to anyone who is interested in forex trading or who is interested in crypto trading. 
all right so with that being said i'll see you in the next video turn fx peace i'm out